All right, Cape Crusader, you won the giveaway from last week. Enjoy your trending comic book list. We are back to chat another list of the trending most comic books in the comic marketplace being affected by news, seeing spikes, and I'm at the table virtually with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. His name is Russ Bright. How you feeling? Tom, it is great to be here, and you know what? This list is absolutely on fire for so many movie and TV things, and it's only February. Comic fam, that's why you gotta slap that subscribe button because the comic industry is a 24 seven news cycle and you know we're here for you every single week. Kick them off with number 10 with a team that debuted in Alpha Flight. Number 10 on the list, Sunfire and Big Hero 6, number one. Now this book is selling solidly for $120 with a $515 sale for a CGC 9.8. This is the first full team appearance of Big Hero 6, which includes fan favorites like Baymax and Go Go Tamago but we had already seen them show up in an earlier issue of Alpha Flight. That's right, that Alpha Flight 17 early Big Hero 6 appearance regularly hits those 50 cent bins unknowingly, does it not? Yes, Tom, I have totally put these in the 50 cent bin, and we even knew back in December 2020 that Disney Plus was planning on doing a Big Hero 6 series, but we have new news this week. What are we talking about, Tom? That's right, Russ. We did hear news about Big Hero 6 as recent as December, but this week we're hearing rumors from a non-official source that Big Hero 6 may be incorporated into Secret Invasion, an MCU property, or even Agent of Atlas, which isn't even confirmed, or even Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, all things that no one was expecting. But here's the thing, just days later, Variety struck this down and they're debunking it. Although Big Hero 6 is coming, it's not looking like this is where they're going to be debuted. I'm not quite certain if people believe this because it's a 1,350% increase in sales and a lot of people are getting behind this rumor. Now, Tom has an amazing piece of information that I didn't even know before we started this, how to find out what the real buy it now price was. That's right, comic fam. This is going to help you out on the hunt if you're trying to figure out what something actually sold for on eBay. Find the root listing. Like once you find the listing you're trying to figure out, click through it to the point where you can actually see the picture like it was originally listed on eBay. Right click on that page and click view page source. You're going to see a huge list of just gobbledygook pages and pages. Don't worry about that because all you're going to do is your find function. This is going to be control F or command F depending on the kind of computer you use. And you're going to type in five letters. T A X E X. It stands for tax exclusive price. You click the find button and you're going to see the real price that that listing sold for in a second. Wow, Tom, that feels like an 80s after school special. The more you know. Comic fam, if that's not worth a thumbs up on this video, I don't know what does. Russ, hit him with number nine on the list because we're taking him to India. Number nine on the list, Tom, we have Spider-Man India number one. This is the first appearance of Pavtir Pakar, which is an Indian version of Peter Parker with a lot of similarities. Now we're seeing a 750% increase in copies sold in the last seven days with $20 average sales and high sales of $50 for a high grade raw copy after unconfirmed rumors started circulating that this version of Spider-Man may be seeing the screen and into the Spider-Verse too. Tom, I really like this character and it's interesting because this is only a four issue miniseries and a lot of people might think it's kind of a throwaway character because of so many similarities, but you have to keep in mind that a character like this who doesn't have a whole lot of appearances can easily spike. Remember that there was the cameo at the end of Into the Spider-Verse number one, Spidey 2099 spiked heavily after that. That's a great point, Russ, because Spidey 2099 only took a post credit scene to spike that book. And now with like actors and rumors announced that we may actually see this character become fully incorporated into the narrative as soon as this next movie, it gives reason why members are actively trying to get ahead of the curve for any Spider-Verse character, especially one with such a cool character design and similar origin story to our favorite web slinger. Number eight on the list, we have Mortal Combat Collector's Edition number one. Now, with the number of quarters I pumped into these Mortal Kombat video games back in the day at the old arcade, it blows my mind that I never picked up a copy of this super scarce book. Apparently, it was only available through mail order, and that's the reason why this is selling for $300 this week. 
finish him. This comic is so dope. You can't find it anywhere. What is it? Like, this was a comic that you had to get by mail? Tom, had I known that this book contained the prequel story of one of my favorite coin-op video games of all time, I would have definitely sent away the coupon and been able to get this book. I don't really know how it was available, but right now it's coming to light that very, very few people got this book, and that's why even a fine copy sold for $120 this last week. That's right, 120 bucks for a mid-grade copy. We're seeing $300 average sales for this book that debuted in 1992. That is so tough to find, especially in high grade, considering that it was mailed across the country to be received by video game collectors, let alone someone who would put it in a bag and board. This comic features all the first appearances that you care about. You got your full team roster debuting in this comic book. Garo, Sonya, Kano, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Raiden, my favorite, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero. And all all of this is becoming more and more important by the day after the hype train keeps speeding up with the drop of this trailer that looks phenomenal. Tom, this trailer looks absolutely incredible. And the fact that they have put video game realistic fatalities in there, my heart is a flutter. And really, I'm super excited for this. Comic fam, you got to be utilizing that code Tom101 over on the best comic book collectors app in existence. It's called Key Collector Comics. You already know all about it. But if you don't, you need to download it because it's going to help you on your hunt. It's going to help you keep up on all the comic book news. It gets pretty busy. And this is how you can keep up. Download the code, support the show. And let's hit him with number seven on the list because we've got some Monica Rambeau to discuss. Number seven on the list, we have Giant Size Captain Marvel number one. Now, this book is solidly selling for $40 raw with a $350 high sale of a CGC 9.8 and $600 for a newsstand version of a CGC 9.8. Now, we have Monica Rambeau on the cover, and I believe that this book is moving because, God, that amazing Spider-Man annual is just getting out. Out of hand. That's right. The first full appearance, even her appearance as Photon is spiking like crazy in the last couple of weeks, like more than we've ever seen in history. But this particular book, her first solo issue goes over the origin of her superpowers. And with her superpowers being revealed more and more by the week on WandaVision, it makes sense why collectors are looking at this particular issue. But we definitely owe Bleeding Cool some kudos for breaking down this cool narrative. But it also spiked this book to all hell a 650 percent increase in sales over copies sold last week this is one of those books that everyone knew about she was on the cover we all recognize and understand this book and no one was specking on it no one was looking at this book and there are very very few copies listed on ebay key collector even says if you got a copy you should probably list it now because we have no idea how long this is going to last. Monica Rambeau's powers on the show are a little different than the comic books. And in this particular comic, we are actually seeing a further analysis of how it makes sense a bit more scientific and a bit more physical in nature which is more like the show and we actually owe the great Dwayne McDuffie for that who had a master's degree in physics so he was trying to make the comic book nonsense make sense and in doing so he actually kind of led the path to making it make sense in Disney plus so Dwayne McDuffie were doing great work at Marvel, but they were also doing great work over at DC where they were creating the Milestone universe. McDuffie helped create Icon, Static, and some other incredible characters over there that we know we're going to be seeing in the near future. And now we're at number six with some West Coast Avengers hype. Issue number 61. Russ, since before the WandaVision show debuted, you have been chatting West Coast Avengers. The fact that people haven't been spiking on a bunch of these comics, it's still surprising. But I think that just changed today. The fact that West Coast Avengers number 61 has something to do on this list and it has something to do with an ad we see during WandaVision is awesome. I have been telling people that I think they're going to tie in some of this West Coast Avengers stuff and people keep pointing to there's this mini series. We've got House of M and I'm like, hey, man, everyone's ignoring West Coast Avengers like they always have. It's a great series and there's a lot of crazy stuff where Wanda is messing things up. That's right, we have a $25 average sales, a high sale of $55 for a raw copy. That's because graded copies are not ones that people were sending down to Florida to prep for this show, which is seemingly a miss right now because this is actually where we find out that Scarlet Witch is revealed to be a Nexus being. And that means that she belongs equally to all timelines in divergent realities. 
So this book, West Coast Avengers 61, has the origin of Immortus, who's also known as Kang the Conqueror. We have an appearance of the Timekeepers, and we are seeing a 1,233% increase on this book. With all of the crazy things happening and the fact that Doctor Strange's new movie is Multiverse of Madness, we are probably going to be seeing a lot more Wanda. That's right. And this little ad that debuted in between the show, it's similar to like what the Dharma Initiative did during the Lost Days. Comment down below if you even know what I'm talking about there, comic fam. But the Nexus, the transdimensional gateway and the beings associated with them are getting a clear shout out in this small little commercial. I'm so stoked about this. Number five on the list, we have some Bronze Age goodness, Marvel Spotlight number four, which is the third appearance of Werewolf by Night, but the first appearance of Darkhold. The Book of Sins. Now, we've been talking for the last couple weeks, and Tom even had Vary Gary on to talk about this potential in WandaVision, and this rumor has been building, so much so that sales are up this week. We're seeing a $175 average sale and a high sale for a 9.0 of $429. And this increase in copies sold has been a wave that only keeps growing. And we're not going to get into any spoilers because we are filming this right after WandaVision. But I expect this book to keep going up. Could it be Cathan though? Could it be ties to Mephisto? Could it be ties to Nightmare, who has had rumors of being the antagonist for Doctor Strange's second movie? We don't know yet, but by the week, we are getting closer, which is why you got to hit that subscribe button because we're going to be here every week reporting on the comic changes as the market spikes. Also, Russ, we have to hit him with number four on the list because this is a flashback. This is a book that we talked about years ago. The Millarverse is starting to evolve. Number four on the list, Jupiter's Legacy number one, with a $10 average sale, but a $235 high sale for a CGC 9.8. Now, when the Millarverse, Mark Millar's contract with Netflix, was announced a few years ago, people were really excited about Magic Order, which was Netflix's first foray into making comic books. And we mentioned quite a few of the other series that could potentially be coming to Netflix. Well, now we have confirmation that there is a May 7th release for Jupiter's Legacy, and this book is spiking because of it. 700% increase in copies sold, and this five-issue series is a must-read. It's highly recommended about the children of superheroes living in the shadow of their golden age parents. However, this is one of those moments where it's like, holy smokes, you know, Option News spiked a lot of Millar comics, did it not, Russ? And this is the only one that's really come to fruition. It really did, Tom. And we were talking about potentially something with Nemesis, even more kick-ass stuff. But the fact that Jupiter's Legacy is the clear winner, it's a good thing. And we're looking forward to this. If this lands and it does well, I think that we need to open up Key Collector and take a look at the other optioned indies and Malarverse titles that are going to be primed to look at again. Because right now they're at an all-time low because we haven't been chatting about this for years. Tom, are we really going to talk about speculation on a bunny here? Is that what this next number is about? That's right. We got number three, Fantastic Four 185, the first appearance of Nicholas Scratch, the Warlock, seeing $8 average sales and a high sale of $70 for a high-grade raw copy. This is the son of Agatha Harkness, and with spec at an all-time high for this very integral character to the Marvel Universe now, it makes sense why we're seeing a 400% increase in copies sold. But that was back in January. Coupling that with the fact that this is also the first team appearance of the Witches of New Salem, that just became really important this week. But no spoilers here because we're chatting about Senior Scratchy, the rabbit. And I'm curious, comic fam, do you think that this character drank the wrong polyjuice potion? Could this rabbit actually be the son of Agatha? Folks, this is an interesting one and obviously not a book that anyone had graded. What are your thoughts on this spec? Answer down below and we'll give you an opportunity to win this amazing Eternals variant by Lucio Perillo. Comment down below, enter to win this giveaway, and let's hit him with number two on the list because the spec has come full circle today. We are going to be seeing DC's first Latin superhero. Hit the screen, Infinite Crisis, number five, the first full and cover appearance of Jaime Reyes the third Blue Beetle. $50 average sale for this once $20 book and a $300 CGC 9.8 sale. This is a popular book, and we have been talking about this for a couple years now. Jaime Reyes is definitely something that 
people have wanted to see. But who knew that this month in 2021, Charm City Kings director Angel Manuel Soto is going to be bringing this character to the screen. This is what he had to say. It is an honor to direct Blue Beetle, the first Latino superhero film for DC. I want to sincerely thank everyone at Warner Brothers and DC for trusting me to bring Jaime Reyes to life. I can't wait to make history together. Well said, comic fam. How you feeling about this? Because this was a spec that has come in and out of radar for three years now that was paid off today. Comic fam, if you like what we do and you love comic books, we have a monthly subscription service where we send you comics every single month. And we have exclusives where we partner with Marvel, Dynamite, IDW, Boom, some of your favorite studios. Hey, this month we've even got a DC variant that we're working on. You gotta sign up. Link down below. You are already going to be buying both of these exclusives that every member is going to be getting in their box. We got Demon Days number one, a Mike McCone blacklight variant going in every single member's mail call. But we're also teaming up with Scorpion Comics doing a joint exclusive of Joker number one, a cover done by the art director of God of War, Raph freaking Grissetti. This thing is gorgeous. Link in the description, Comic Tom 101, to join the community. And let's hit him with number one, the number one most trending book in the world. It seems like James Tiny and the Fourth cannot stay off this list. And this book, Department of Truth, number one, we have been talking about for months. The buzz has been amazing. And really, guys, if you didn't buy this in November, back when Key Collector told you to buy it and we were telling you to buy it, you missed the boat. $25 average sales and a high sale of $150 for a CGC 9.8 for a comic that you could have bought off the stands for $4. Back in November, we were telling you, Key Collector was telling you that we had insider sources telling us that there was a high stakes bidding war taking place for this title. And we're seeing as of February 19th, The Hollywood Reporter confirming our report, attaching Elizabeth Murdoch in the conversation for who was bidding on the title. It's happening, which is why we're seeing an uptick in copies sold of 419%. Comic fam, this is a win for Key Collector. This is a win for us. This is a win for the community who specced on the book heavily because this paid off this week. We're even seeing a $550 sale for a lot of 27 copies on eBay. I did the math and checked the best offer, which puts an average price above $21 for this issue. Comic fam, what do you think about this news? Do you own this book? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, it is so cool to hear this news about Department of Truth, but what's even doper is that Todd McFarlane went on stage, I think he probably did it virtually, at the Comics Pro Retailer event to like let everybody know that it was not only happening, but it's gonna be getting a TV series. So just kind of like driving the point in that this is gonna happen. I'm so stoked. Speaking of Todd McFarlane, I did an interview and this is part one and you absolutely need to watch it. We chat about what he likes to hunt for. Yeah, it was freaking awesome. Have a great day.